Welcome back to John's Films. If you saw my previous content here with the Mac, you've got to know this is coming. You may have even noticed that the project name is Multi OS Benchmark. I built an extreme benchmark, about 30 minutes worth of footage, and put a lot of effects in it so that we can be sure we're seeing any differences that are relative to the hardware and the way that it uses Resolve. I've now run it in DaVinci Resolve on the Mac, and I've run it in DaVinci Resolve on the Windows computer, both using the Studio version. Let's jump in and see what the differences are in render times on the two platforms. Our PC configurations today are based on two platforms, one in the Windows camp, a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, with the MSI X399 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, 64 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM, and three M.2 NVMe drives. In the Apple camp, we have a 21.5 inch 2017 iMac Retina 4K with an Intel Core i7-7700 processor. It has 32 gigabytes of 24 megahertz DDR4 RAM and boasts a Radeon Pro 560 4 gigabyte graphics card in it. It has a one terabyte fusion drive, which is part SSD, part spinning. On the bottom half, you see the GPUs that I tested. In Windows, I tested an RX 580 from AMD and two NVIDIA cards, a GTX 1070 and an RTX 2080 Ti. Over on the Apple, I was able to test a Radeon RX 580 through an external GPU enclosure and a Radeon Pro 560 4GB. The astute individuals have already identified that we ran the RX 580 on both platforms. So, finally, which is faster, the Mac or the Windows? Ah, not so fast. While the math looks simple, 30 minutes on the Mac and 24 minutes on the Windows machine, there's a larger story. In the Mac's favor, we used QuickSync, which is an Intel technology that preps the data in a special part of the processor and feeds the graphics card as it encodes. This speeds things up dramatically on Intel-based machines. The Windows machine benefits from its use of the AMD hardware encoder for encoding. Yet, that's not the full story. We have to remember the Mac is only using a 4-core 8-thread processor, while the Windows machine is running 16-core 32-thread. Additionally, the RX 580 is tethered to the Mac via a Thunderbolt cable, which can run 40 megabits a second throughput. However, though it is wired to the system bus, it doesn't have direct pipes like it does on the Windows machine into the processor to speed up both memory and processing tasks. My next finding through this benchmarking was just how painful it is to use the native rendering. It took 43 minutes on the Threadripper machine to render this 30 minute 4K H.264 video. You notice in this instance, the 1070 and the 2080 Ti were basically the same. And it's because the majority of the work was done directly on the processor, which didn't change. This again highlights the importance of getting the studio version if you're going to do any significant amount of work because the native encoder is the only option in the render tab of DaVinci Resolve Free Edition. Our next finding has to do with the Mac rendering. After you look at the chart for a minute, you realize, hey, the worse the Mac did with lesser quality or lesser speed graphics cards is 29 minutes with the RX 580 through an external GPU. The Mac must be much more efficient because it, again, is only a 4-core 8-thread processor. That's amazing! Not so fast. This utilizes the Intel QuickSync technology. What happens if we don't use it? To find out, in the name of science, I burned some electricity for an hour and a half. It took quite a long time. The Mac was blowing fans, noise everywhere, and you can see the importance of being able to use the studio version on a Mac. My final takeaway from this testing was that if you're going to run two graphics cards, one handling the GUI and compute technology while the other one is strictly computing, make the strongest one do the work. It appears that that benefits you while rendering and presumably it would benefit you during playback as well. 
though none of these cards explicitly struggled during playback in the preview windows. This chart makes it readily apparent the difference between the 1070 and the 2080 Ti is not that significant. Sure, there's a difference, but in 30 minutes worth of footage being rendered to 9 to 10, 10 and a half minutes, that extra minute and a half, while 15, 20% faster, is not really that important. So what we've learned here is with DaVinci Resolve 16, adding the new hardware-enabled encoders in both the NVIDIA and AMD graphics cards, the specific graphics card that we've got for a render doesn't necessarily matter that much, as long as it has the hardware encoder included. At that point, the encoders start to look different when you're looking from Turing to Pascal, which are two of the most recent versions of the NVIDIA architecture. And same story over in the AMD camp. So now it causes us for render purposes to really think about, do we want to spend the extra money on that GPU? Or is it important to get better storage or maybe better RAM? We'll have to check that out in future videos. A lot of bench barking went into this one. Please help me out by hitting like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.